So what do we want for you to get? First of all is that the confidence and the assurance that biological or sustainable farming, whatever term you want to put on it, is not only a working model, <clears throat> but also it works better than the conventional practices. Better yields, better profitability. Not to mention all of the by default benefits, carbon sequestration, no pollution reduction and erosion, so on and so forth. The world market is demanding cleaner, healthier, sustainable, tasty food. Amazing. The consumer rules. The consumer is the one who you really produce for. You and I are consumers. And the consumer rules. And the world market, <clears throat> discerning consumers are demanding real food. <clears throat> yes, there's always going to be the McDonald's crowd. There's always going to be that group that comes to the doctor and says, Doctor, don't tell me I have to change my diet. Don't change, tell me I have to exercise or change my lifestyle. Just give me a drug. Fine. Yeah, there will always be those people out there to eat the standard garbage that is produced by agriculture. It goes into the McDonald's chains and those kinds of things. And I choose my terms very distinctly and deliberately. Because the, the data from the universities proves the food today is junk. It does not provide the nutrition for us to be healthy. It does not have the nutrient levels. It's loaded with pesticides. It's loaded with mycotoxins, in, particularly when we talk about grains. In 1990, there was an international conference in Berlin on mycotoxins in the world grain supplies. Very significant problem particularly relative to Africa. Why? Because they prove that mycotoxins significantly increase the replication of HIV and hepatitis B. If you go into the grocery store, and we've done that, a pathologist friend of mine has done that, gone into the grocery store and randomly picked off from the shelf baby foods, cereals, various different grains, and what he found out was there wasn't one product on the market that wasn't loaded with mycotoxins. Mycotoxins are the toxins from fungus. These are not molds necessarily you see growing on the grain. These are molds that are microscopic within the grain. It's all about nutrition. It's all about nitrogen fertilization. Why they're there. As we address that issue, we can eliminate the mycotoxins not through genetic manipulation, through appropriate nutrition is how we get rid of those things. And so we have to talk about basic sciences, key grower practices, in order to solve these issues. <clears throat> so we're going to talk about various different issues, uh, weeds, diseases, insects, GMOs, consumer demand, some basic sciences, um, as well as uh, how we're going to do some of these things. Foliar feeding, some testing protocols, and uh, certainly the most important thing, though, is the way you think. Most people are crisis driven and they see an insect, they see a disease, they see a weed out there in the paddock, ah, we haven't sprayed to kill it. Most farmers are at war every single day. Every day they get up in the morning, what is it we're going to have to kill today? What insect, what weed, what disease are we going to have to kill today? That's the mentality on the farm. What we have to understand is that we don't have a pesticide deficiency in our food chain or on the farm. What we have is a nutritional deficiency, a nutritional imbalance. That's why those weeds, diseases, and insects are present. They're not there because of commercial agriculture, because we're producing monocrops, and because we're doing it commercially on large scale. They're there because we have neglected the nutrition in the system.